Welcome to Wow What A Week, hashtag Polytrix. If our next guest was facing England on a rugby field, he wouldn't use Afrikaans when talking tactics. He'd say it straight the way it is. That's how much of a straight talker he is, and that's why we love having him around, even if it's on the white or the black side. Please welcome back, Butsang. I'll choose whatever side I want, Mui Lua. <laughs> Uh, isn't my chest supposed to be clear and, and to be for the box? By the way, talking of it fresh, uh, good morning to you and yes, the sir. viewers and the team members. You know, I wanted to be a rugby player. And then what happened? When I was influenced by Sobukwe and the size of my body. Uh, yeah, yeah, and yes. my dad refused. And my mom supported my dad saying rugby, it's like bulls fighting there. And I said to my mom, but I'm a bull, I'm a Torian. Mm. And dad rejected me playing rugby because that Pan-Africanist pastor man claim that it's a white man's sport. And I'm like, but so Ukwe is a rugby player and we have been Africanist. And I lost the battle. I would have been a very good scrummer for the box by now, if it wasn't of my death. Are the spring box uh, winning tonight? Tomorrow, uh, yes, yes. Uh, is it Saturday? Yeah, no, they are not playing Sunday. Well, look, it's going to be a tough one uh, uh, with all blacks, but uh, I, I think they will come out victorious. As long as we don't let them run ahead of us in that first half. Because this thing of chasing doesn't work. I, I, if you, if I, yeah. you let the All Blacks go. Yeah, then you won't catch up with them. They are gone. not France or England. Yeah. If they don't lead, they don't want, if, 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 if the box can be ahead all the time, mm. they will come out victorious. But it's going to be a, a very tough and rough game as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So speaking of rough and tough, let's start in our minds. Um, the Lily Mine uh, is back in the news. What's happening there? Yes, uh, I remember the story. I think it's about three years now. Uh, oh, yes. the, 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 the mine in Mpumalanga, mm. where the three miners actually perished there. And there was a container, and, and then there was a collapsed. And then there was an implosion. There was an implosion. And then the, co the container was buried <laughs> under, 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 under the, yes, the belly yes. of the earth. And the, those three. I think it contained me seeing Renda Lee. You, you, you've got a good memory. I only remember... I, I'm, literally, I'm literally remembering from the news bulletins from three years ago. It was me seeing a render. I'm trying to remember the other one. Okay. But my, that souls uh, rest in peace. Yes, and unfortunately and sadly for the families, uh, the, the mortal remains or the bodies of, of, of those uh, deceased were never recovered. They went to an extent of even the Supreme Court of Appeal. They were given awards that the mines and the government... Uh, they should make sure that those bodies are extracted from those mines. But sadly, fresh, the, the, the families, the community, the unions, uh, 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 they are in a bad position because the government did not comply with the court orders. Mm. So now the community, as well as the families, they've given him and Mashaba, the, the, the leader of Action, a Action SA, uh, 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 and Avi David and permission to can actually start legal proceedings on their behalf. On their behalf. Oh, wow. uh, okay. uh, jointly so, to force the government and the mining company to can, you know, obey and or adhere to the court orders, which I think is a move in the right direction. But something very interesting happened there as well. Uh, uh, because when one of the you know media platforms interviewed both the family and the community, why are they doing this now? Why did they choose? him and Mashaba, mm. is because they said they knocked on the doors of almost every political party in the country, which is very surprising that AMCU and the EFF and mm. the MUM didn't jump into the bandwagon to gain aid families of the former miners since they always stand up for the working class. In fact, in fact, is it the gold one mine uh, in the East Rand uh, issue the other day? I mean, the EFF were there. Uh, exactly, the EFF exactly. Were there. So, so... So to an extent that they resorted to seek help from, from, from Hemen Mashaba. Mm. And, and they said they knocked on Hemen's door several times. And only last week he responded to that and he decided to take the matter up. They were going, the, their stories, they were going to go to Afri Forum after. Sure. You can see how people have They should lost. have started at Afri Forum. Uh, it would have went on very fast. This would have happened very, yeah. very, very, very uh, fast. But, but, but that's the one part. One of the community leaders, one of the chiefs from that mining area, remember the, the community or the mining area, mm. if there's a royal family or chiefs there, they must agree and give permission that a company can go and mine in that area. Yes. Uh, remember one of 
the accusations was that it was the Zama Zamas or the so-called illegal miners or unofficial miners who, because of digging illegally, they created that implosion. Mm. Interestingly for me, one of the community leaders said, actually, they know that it's not the Zama Zamas. It is the mining company. It's an allegation, but mm. I'm, I'm just quoting it. The mining companies, they mined beyond the territory or the uh, radius of what was allocated to okay. them. It is not the Zamazamas. And I can tell you that happens very, very frequently mm. in, in mining you know, sectors and come to say they overstep the boundary line mm. of where they should stop. And that what caused that? It's greed, obviously. It's wanting to take more. Mm. And, mm. and the same situation of what happened in what do you call it? The gold one, you know. The gold one. Talking yes. about the lily mine. That, so that is the story with the, uh, the history of the lily mine in Pumalang. In fact, it's uh, pretty Nkambule, Solomon Nyerenda, and Yvonne Mnisi. Yes, I, yeah. I, I remember Mnisi and Nyerenda only because of the Nyerenda interesting surname, you know. Yes, uh, yes. But, but linking that to what transpired at the beginning of this week, interesting story. At the gold one. Was it a hostage situation or was it a sit-in? Uh, officially, and what people are saying, and in my observation and, and you know interpretation, it was a protest. Okay. I, I, I heard three people who were interviewed live on television who were in inverted commas, some of the hostages. Mm. What happened there, and I'll come to what, what is the cause of this whole thing. We spoke about unions in the past. What happened there was... There's people who went on a shift in an evening. They were supposed to go out in the early hours of the morning. Okay, so this is at Moda East Mine. Yes. In, run in, run in, by Gold One. By, by, by Gold One, yes. Yeah. So those who were supposed to come in in the morning shift, apparently people in the mine will know better. that The elevator that brings the other ones out of the mine or the mm. container, whatever you call it, or the, the, the transport, mm. it didn't come up. So they couldn't go in and start their shift in the morning. Then it came out apparently that over 500 people staged a seat in there led by AMCU. Okay. Okay, and the reason, there's various reasons that AMCU has, has listed as to why. One, uh, uh, it's because they are not the recognized union, but they claim to be the one in majority, and we'll get to that. So NUM is the recognized union. NUM is the, is the regulated, accepted, and recognized union of that particular mine. So why can't you recognize both? Okay. The, why the, can't workers decide which one they want to belong to and both are recognized? They can. They can be recognized. So what's NUM the problem? According to AMCO, since 2012, yeah. they became the majority. You see, to be recognized, number one, you must be the majority. Members can belong to any. I a mean, union can have even five members. Mm -hmm. But the majority one will be the one when there's bargaining negotiations, engagements with conditions of employment is the one that the employer will, will talk to. Is that the one that even has a shop steward on they site? They will have a shop steward on site. Mm. So it has been NUM for a number of years and historically. Now, AMCU says when they became majority, because there is a compromise between NUM and management and staff, mm. they don't want to recognize them. They've been applying, they've been looking at it all since 2012. They, they've actually released records of showing how much they attempted to. That is why I believe more the story that it was a sit-in because employees, even those who are alleged to have been kidnapped, are saying they are sympathizing with AMCU mm. because they've long said they want to leave NUM and the AMCU membership must go up. I saw three of the people who were interviewed. One guy actually said, funny enough, the only thing that they stepped in is that AMCU didn't tell them earlier that we are going to do a sit in there, nobody's going to go. Even the, the forklift or the, 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 the lift mm. driver or controller was also one of the protesters. So he says, should he have been warned, prior warned, about the planned protest and sit in underground, he would have brought snacks and scuff tea, you know, a lunchbox, no, because no, he is in support yes, yes, of the yes. protest. Understand? So, so these people are frustrated. They are saying NUM is no longer saving their interest in meat and to, because it's, it's capitulating with management. That's mm. their allegation. And, and to show that they are, they are not doing that, AMCO has released documents that shows that majority of their members even when you look at video protests, most people are wearing AMCU regalia, and yet the employer is refusing to, 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 you know, to collaborate or to work or to recognize AMCU. But you see, Fresh, that's the problem with uh, uh, labor federations and unions. 
over the years, and I've said it on this platform before, historically in South Africa, labor movements, organizations were linked to political parties. Yes. It's particularly the ANC with Kosati and its affiliates. Mm. Now they are in power. It is going to be very difficult for mushrooming or upcoming unions mm. to be recognized because people who are sitting at strategic positions of employers are members of the ANC in majority or deployees of the ANC. And therefore, they are, they are resisting mm. to accept these unions which are affiliated to other political parties or aligning themselves. For example, AMCU, it's not aligned to the EFF, but it has a very good working relationship mm -hmm. with the EFF. That's why on the Americana celebration, it's EFF and AMCO, AMCO and EFF, sure. you know, sure. hand in hand. And, and, and that, that, that has become a problem and a thorn mm -hmm. in, in Kosati and its affiliates. And that's what transpired in that mine. In fact, the EFF um, were on site. Um, at um, at this mine, yes. this gold one mine, saying that they want to be party uh, to whatever discussions happen uh, going forward. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on that? I think they want to be watchdogs. I think they want to make sure that AMCO becomes the recognized organization since they have a working relationship with. And I think the EFF believes that AMCO is in majority. I believe that they're in majority at the moment, looking at the numbers of the protesters, mm. looking at the fact that some of the people who actually were held captive um, are in management. So they are actually sympathizing with AMCO. And I think the EFF is trying to make sure that AMCO becomes the recognized, you know, mm -hmm. that, that because of their work in the political relationship they have. Sure. And, 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 and I think it is not fair on the workers. It is not fair on people who are supposed to be respected with freedom of association. Sure. Now the employer is playing games, you know, in delaying tactics for which union to recognize. And, and I think uh, that tactics that the employer, it came back and it backfired. And, you know, 500 and what? 30 odd number mm. of people who were now sitting at the belly of the earth because of administrative sleeping issues. on literally sleeping on rocks uh, exactly dehydrated hungry for three days anything could have happened and this happened at the back of us commemorating and crying for the three you know bodies that are still at the mm. belly of the earth in Mpumalanga. let's go from um, Mpumalanga to kzn i never thought we'd be discussing the south african music awards uh, but here we are South African Music Awards were supposed to happen in Durban. Yes. And now we are told that the South African Music Awards will not be receiving 20 million rand from, is it the Durban municipality? No, no, no. It is, it is, it is actually 53 million rand. 20 million is yeah. from the, the, the Department of Economic Development. Oh, and yes, 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 yes. Yeah. And the other, you know, 28 odd million, it was supposed to be, a, it was a budget. Mm. of the Devon Municipality, or the, the what is called Devon now these days? Uh, uh, a Municipality. Yeah. But let us correct something. Sure. Samas, they were not going to receive that as cash. Okay. That, that is the budget that the true state in uh, 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 lakes, the municipality and it had budgeted for mm. towards the summer. Okay. That, that, that's their budget. They were going to spend another 120 million. It's also on the contract. Mm. I listened to the interview. So, of, it's, it's, so it's it's been signed for. Yes, the contract contracted. was been signed for. Yeah, it was actually to be exact. It was signed. But the awards the, are supposed to be now. On the third on the third of October, the contract was signed. Yeah. And I think these things were supposed to happen in the next two or three weeks. Yeah, in the, in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, 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 the, 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 I don't know if you know and the viewers know what actually transpired. Okay, tell us. The, the, the an anonymous member of Action SA, again, Action SA, Majava's party, yes. wrote an anonymous damning, damning report with facts. I saw it, mm. attached some of the official documents and transactions and released it into the social media and said, somebody, I'm not going to say who I am, but can somebody cheat the president of the republic about this? If he doesn't stop this, mm. uh, we are going to go public about this. This is corruption. So they were actually accusing officials of government from the Department of Tourism and Economic Development, mm. guests led by who? Led by the chairperson of the African National Congress in KwaZulu Natal, uh, Mr. Duma. Okay. He is the MEC mm. of, of the Department of Economic you know, Development and Tourism. And they've been doing it. They've been doing the MTN8, PSL MTN8, they've been doing the summers, they've signed a three-year contract and all that. Now, because of that allegations and other factors that the government has instituted uh, 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 
uh, measures, restrictive measures in spending, in government spending, in prioritizing. Mm. Uh, uh, I was going to say apparently, but the presidential spokesperson, Vincent Maguinha, mm. and the spokesperson of the department in KZ, and they came out and said, it is true indeed that President Ramaphosa made a call to Mr. Duma. And, and now people who do not know how you know, public administrative processes work, mm. they are questioning why is the president interfering with an MEC. Yes. But President Ramaphosa did not, and I'm, I'm, I'm correct, I'm not here to protect uh, Mr. Ramaphosa, but based on, on what uh, Vincent Maguena said, Mr. Ramaphosa called Mr. Juma, not as the President of the Republic calling the, the chairperson of the uh, ANC. Okay. He called him as the President of the ANC, mm. calling the chairperson of the ANC in the province mm. to say, but comrade, uh, uh, we have decided to put austerity measures we have decided towards the election to focus on development and poor people and spending our money where our people, especially in KZN, mm. rural mm. areas and townships, I don't think it's a wise move to be spending this money on what is perceived. Mm. This is another thing that we must correct. People perceive tourism issues mm. as luxury, wasting money issues. I was going to say, though, but is it not from the Department of Economic Development and Tourism? That's correct. It was so, from there. So what must happen to the tourism budget then? Let me tell you why I'm saying this. Mm -hmm. So because, I mean, if the summers are going to be televised and you are obviously then getting return on investment in terms of exposure on TV. There's hotel rooms that are booked. There's staff. There's restaurants. People, in fact, and people will be in, uh, in KZN and Durban for longer than two, three days. And yeah. people will come for the yeah. whole week. Exactly. Uh, there's staff who are there for the week leading towards. Surely the 20 million is actually a drop in the ocean in terms of the re return on investment you're going to get. If you look at it that way, and I would like to agree, if you look at it from the public administration finance background, yes. it's a return on investment. And people should understand, even if we have budgets for other issues like water, sanitation, mm. education, mm. and health, there is also budgets for tourism. Exactly. That must be used to attract tourism. It's allocated. To get, make revenue yes. that can help to fund other projects. And, and, and KZN has done it successfully. But the problem with this this one mm. is it is now clouded with elements or allegations of corruption, maladministration, ah. and friends and family and, and, and comrades being given tenders and contracts to render those services. So the problem is not 20 million. No, the problem is not the 20 million. The problem but is the not hands. hosting. It's the hands. It is the famous, you know, hands in the cookie jar. And, ah. and, and, and one of the accusations and allegations is that one of the senior members in the metro. The girlfriend works for the MEC or in the office of the MEC of tourism. And therefore, this money is making circles mm. uh, amongst the comrades. And that's where the problem is. The problem is there is nothing wrong in a government department of tourism or economic development mm. hosting events and spending money to host events. The, the budget or the estimated figures, they set for this period. And it is, again, what we are saying, people who didn't go to Devon for a week or two, mm. they will go for, for I mean, a day, a day or two, or two. Mm. they will go for a week. Yeah. And they said they are expecting approximately, only for the event, mm. 4,000 people at once in a day. Mm. And they will stay longer. They will, you know, take leave and be on, and spend money on restaurants. And then there will be temporary jobs created for about 5,000 people. That's why they mentioned. Mm. And the, the estimated profit margin or return that they will make it, it's above 300 million. Mm. So, so the issue is not the return, it's not the processes, it's the politics behind it. And, and sadly, people like you who are in the music and arts industry, mm. this will impact and affect you because of the politics involved in it. It's a sad situation. But again, it makes me wonder mm -hmm. if it is not right to be done in the KwaZulu Natal province. And the government spends money. Are they saying it's right to be done in the Northwest province? Because I think the same circumstances will prevail to host an, an, an event of this magnitude. Mm. It doesn't only take business people and private role players. And it involves a lot of things. It involves security. Yeah. It involves convoys. It involves, you know, uh, uh, making sure that the province or Mafiking or Mawatu or what or whatever, Rustenberg, it's ready to can host the event. All the logistics involved, you know, the same way as we host the World Cup or what, because there's a lot of people coming. This is this is South African 
Arts and Music Awards mm -hmm. that, that are, it's an international, we own it as a country, the National Department of Arts, Sports and Culture, they are contributing towards that event. Yeah. Because they, 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 they recognize them. So uh, it's very worrying that this is now being moved away from one province that was going to make an impact in their tourism uh, to another, as if the other one, no, the province will not be involved. Now, are we saying the Northwest province, which is troubled, which is under administration, which is doing bad, is going to now, in the next two weeks, arrange, have all, you know, uh, SOEs and SOPs ready to can host this? They've, they've done it before, so I'm sure they can You, put you it need off. to plan. You need to have a budget. You need to have resources. Mm -hmm. Are they in a position to can do it? At, they've done it before, but not at this short-term notice. Mm -hmm. Having have well-planned, and KZN has lost. So th those are the politics behind uh, the, the Summer's Awards with KZN. And, and, and the sad thing is KZN needs it. Um, you know, after the floods and everything else that KZN has been in that has impacted tourism, and um, even the bad press in terms of um, how the beaches were looking at some yes, stage. Yes, uh, KZN needs the tourism. They, they, they need it. Look, I always tell people, uh, KZN is my third favorite province in, mm. in, 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 in the country. Mm. Sadly, my, my own province, Northwest and Gauteng, where they are not on the top three. Mm. KZN, you are right, they needed this event and other events to actually can revamp itself and bring itself. It was not only the floods. There were riots, mm. you know, July 2020. Oh, yes, 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 riots, yes. there were floods. There's been also killings. There's been assassinations. There's been a lot of things that have affected uh, the KZ and tourism very badly. Mm. And, and I think they needed this, you know, as, a, as an injection to their revenue. But I think politics and dirty politics have actually disadvantage that province to can aid it. And as I say, you spend 58 million, you make 300 million. That 300 million, it was not going to go. Mm. This is how government work, by the way. People don't know. If I'm a government entity or a department and I make revenue, mm. it does not go into the bank account of that department. It goes to the fiscal, to the treasury. Fiscal. We all benefit from yes. it. Yes. Then the treasury will say, KwaZulu Natal, well done. Mm. Uh, let's see where the country needs this money. Yeah. KwaZulu Natal will have to motivate to say, no, no, but can you plow back the money to can assist with those flat victims before you share, mm. you know, our, our, our benefits with other provinces. Start with us. They will have to motivate and the treasury will look into that. But yeah, such state of affairs, not because I'm angry or sad that it's going to the Northwest, uh, uh, but I think it was too late. This is one of the signs that bad administration, mm. it is not good for the country. Sure. Let's bring it back to uh, Gauteng. What's um, happening in Kauti? Foreign-owned spaza shops, tax shops, uh, have been raided. And you are asking the question, what of the local ones? Yeah, yeah, I'm glad, Fresh, that you you see why I like working with you. You said it right. I'm like, you said tech shops. Can Why do we call them spaza shops, man? It's like we are not taking these people and this small business serious. Yeah, because spaza ki ampur. Ampur. Yeah, you know, yeah. Near, uh, Wapaza mis. Nearly. Yeah, Wapaza mis. Yeah, no, it's, it's just tech shops that we grow up having in the townships, feeding us and so forth. Yeah. My question, and, and that's me, my concern is, we, we are being talked about as a country that is very racist and xenophobic. We mm -hmm. know the racism part, but now we became and, and Afro, Afro, Afrophobic, not mm -hmm. even xenophobic. Mm -hmm. Now it has been extended to, to Asia and the Pakistan. So the darker the people they are apparently were resisting to that. This uh, as Paza shops, as they call them, tech shops in the townships, but, and I want to focus on the townships specifically, they are not only and solely owned by foreign nationals. That's that's one point that that I know I'm putting a thorn that people will say, hey, are you protecting foreigners? I'm not saying that. Mm. I'm saying, have we done our homework as a nation to say these kids who have been dying on poisonous food, where mm. it's proven, mm. these expired foodstuffs and, and that have been sold, and are they still, have we proved that they are specifically from foreign owned nationals, tech shops or spaza shops? Have mm. we proved that part? What about have we tested the spaza shops of, 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 or, or that are owned by South African nation? Have we done that? Or are we waiting mm. for another child to die 
who has bought either biscuits or chocolates from a South African-owned spaza shop, then we will start reacting. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. hey, we checked if our own, if my brother, who in Mosaka and Ranfontaine is owning a spaza shop, mm -hmm. have we been there as the committee to check if my brother is also selling expired food and, and, and it's, it's clean and we should do that. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm asking our nation to. That's what our community is. We should do that. But there's also another element to tech shops and spaza shops. We already know now that we have seen videos making rounds. We have seen it on national television. We have mm -hmm. read it about it on newspapers. There they are selling expired food. Some of the food they are selling, they are not on the sub database. In other words, they are barcodes. They are not. We don't know who's the manufacturer, where they come from, where they are imported from. So that's what uh, customs will call illicit goods. Mm -hmm. yeah? Now I have a concern, and I'm worried that the business sector has never spoken about it. We have seen people, and I'm not here to, to promote any brand, but I'll mention, I've seen personally on TV where people were canning foods and had ready-made printed labels of famous brands like Cool Baked Beans, mm -hmm. uh, Rama Margarine, and all that, okay? Mm -hmm. Our famous brands, what we call famous brands, they will manufacture in a, some backyard garage somewhere in Fordsburg. They will brand them and they will sell them in spaza shops. Mm. My concern and surprise is, how come the famous brands, the owners of this food, have never gone on litigation with the perpetrators, with mm. people who are faking their brand? They are mm. quiet. I've never heard uh, the great... But or, or, or just denounce it. Denounce it. You mm. know, one of them that's making rounds, mm. it's Grandpa, the, the aspirin powder. Yes. That many, you know, people that I know around me, almost every second person I know uses grandpa. So are they pirating even grandpa powder? Yes, yes. And, so, and the other day so, I saw so, you galloping one. So what? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> so the pirated one, what are we taking? What's in there? I don't know. I wouldn't know. I don't want to get into allegations. And, and, and that's the, 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 the sad part is this pirated one, somebody... A, a showed one that he bought at the spaza shop yeah. and one that he bought at one of the famous supermarkets. Mm. Uh, if you use that product, you will know by just looking at it, mm. the typo, the writing, the logo, and the barcode. Mm. But many of black people and poor people and people from township, they don't know anything about barcodes. Mm. I know barcodes because I had to work with them at some stage. I know one is the US, 4H, Germany, 5 is Brazil, 6 is South Africa, and things like that. But People don't check those things. They don't check packaging. Mm. You've got a headache, you've got babalas or hangover, you want grandpa, you just open whatever dish to you. You don't know where I bought it. Mm. I may have bought it from my friend, Mohamed Farah, I did. You just drink it. What we don't know is what is inside there. You may be drinking baby powder. Mm. You know, we don't know. And, and this is where the danger is to say, to say these big companies, these mm. big brands, these companies that are being pirated they are silent fresh why but also because if i was at that level operating at that level in terms of business i might even have a team that cracks down on such inspectors yeah working hand in hand with law enforcement exactly that's what to protect the, your good name that, that, that's what the cigarette companies are doing yeah. actually that's why cigarette smugglers the mazotis of this world mm. uh, uh they, they are known or they are suspected and they are being mentioned. I mean, how many Mazotti is being mentioned as a cigarette smuggler almost everywhere? Mm -hmm. He's not suing anybody. He's just quiet about it. Mm -hmm. he, and he has never been charged and prosecuted and found guilty, you know, convicted mm -hmm. for being a cigarette smuggler. But he's okay that he's being addressed as a cigarette smuggler. But the cigarette companies, mm -hmm. because they know that the fake ones or the illicit ones, they will take them out of business. So, you know, South Africa is one of the heavy smoking countries. So they've got agents on the ground. Mm. They get involved because cigarettes are manufactured in bulks. Mm. Now you've got the baked beans, you've got the headache powder, and you've got the, the, the bread margarine and what, what, and it's being pirated and faked, and you are quiet about it. It's very worrying. Let me tell you, I read a, a loss from the U.S., uh, Germany, and one country in Asia, I think it's, it's Singapore, in those countries, mm. if something like this had happened, you know what their laws are saying? Mm. They would have said that whoever had produced that will be charged mm. with a crime of 
uh, uh, chemical warfare or biological warfare mm. because you are using chemical in food or whatever you put there. I don't know whether it's mm. chemical mm. or what. Whatever you are using there to, to can kill and destroy people's health. It's a very serious crime. No, no, no. In South Africa, it's not, it's, we are not talking of chemical warfare, biological warfare. That, that is killing people now. Yeah. Mm. We are sitting here and talking about foreign-owned spazas. We're not dealing with the nucleus of the problem. The nucleus of the problem is that somebody somewhere has opened a factory mm. that is manufacturing things that are not good for our health. Mm. That's why we are suffering from almost everything these days. And that's why I don't take drugs. Even if I'm sick, I don't take drugs. I don't take any tablet mm. or any medicine because I don't know what I'm consuming. Mm. The best medicine for me is what I eat. And I must make sure where it comes from. And, so, and lots of water and lots of rest. Yeah, but even the water you can't trust. I mean, uh, 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 water in Jobek uh, comes from sewage and the sewage spills into the drains. It's also, the, the country is in total mm. chaos and collapse. But we should look at those things. We should not focus on the face value and the scheme of the problem. Mm. To say it's foreign nationals owning these power shops. Where are they operating from? How did they get into the country? How did they get into those places? Those are the issues we should deal with to can diminish this end products. You know, my kids stay in townships. Mm. And I, I'm sitting worried there that my little girl, when he goes to school, he already has this packet of biscuits on Fridays and, and cakes or, or Zimba chips, whatever you call them. Yeah. Uh, that I've never seen that brand in my life. And, and I'm very worried that I may be called to school one day to say the child has stomach aches because of, exactly. uh, of those things. So I rather stick to fruits and vegetables. But you know, kids are kids, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and, and it's very dangerous. We should up the game instead of fighting foreign nationals. We should look at our processes, our laws, and our system. Mm -hmm. And that's where civil society organizations and movements are very important. In a township, we know each other. Mm -hmm. We know who's who. We, we let the people in the communities rise and take it upon themselves in working with law enforcers mm. to be vigilant and to be the guardian of their own community. Even, even incentivize them if you need to incentivize yeah. them. The, where the, where the government failed, mm. let the community rise, but work within the parameters of the law. Yes. Don't, don't be vigilantes and gangsters and go and ban people's puzzles and shops. No, 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 no. Rise, but do it. Call the police to escort you to investigate these things. Sure. And, and I think it will help the government, but we'll also be helping ourselves as, as the, the natives and the citizens of this country. Absolutely. Uh, President Zuma is back in court. Yeah, I... Uh, I the gift I, that keeps on giving. Well, let, let me tell you uh, uh, why I brought that up. It's because on Thursday, mm. the president went to court... And, and what, what people were asking is that, but what for now? Because he's supposed to be facing now the finally the the arms deal charges. Mm. Finally, no, no, no. It's not. It's not over. Uh, President mm. Zuma uh, knows the law. You know, this demonstrates that President Zuma was not an empty-headed president. He knows mm. the laws. So whether mm. he's using them right or wrong, it's immaterial. But you know what happened? In short, and without uh, wasting time. He is now asking the court again to say Billy Downer must excuse himself from the case. Again. He lost. Remember, he lost in the high court. Mm. He lost the appeal in the Supreme Court of Appeal. Coincidentally, before he went to the con court, the judge who said, no, Billy Downer is going nowhere. Mm. He's no longer on the case. Now President Zuma is saying, but that mm. man who refused uh, Billy Downer to leave is no longer there. There's a new judge now. Mm. Let me approach the new judge. He's thinking maybe different from it the might, old one. Exactly. So, exactly. so, so he is just taking advantage of mm. the fact that there's now a new judge who may have a different view than the previous one. Another few months. Would you say we could take a book out of his, uh, a page out of his book and learn how to just kick the can down the road <laughs> for as long as you can. I, I've because, never seen because because you're, you're using the law against itself. Against itself. Yeah, I've never I've never seen somebody in my entire life, not only in South Africa, mm. who is using the law the way President who, who is doing. Who can stand in crowd like and, this? And people can scream and tumble and say, mm. "Yeah, he's guilty. He's avoiding to face his day in court." He is not. He is saying. The law makes these provisions, yes. and I am exhausting. Or every single one of them. Every single provision that the law is doing. It's been, we are going to year 18 now. Mm -hmm. and, and there's not even ones where the court had said contempt, he refused to go to court, and, and he didn't show up. No, 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 he shows up, he goes, but he's, ex he's actually 
exhausting mm. the options that the law has presented in front of him. We created those laws. I always tell people the problem in this country is mm. we created those laws. And when other people, whether it's President Zuma, whether it's foreign nationals, whether it's even criminals, by the way, criminals also, you do it in cyber, convicted criminals mm. in prisons, they went to the Concord years back and they said the constitution of this country says every human being is entitled to clean water, food, medicine, mm. and education. Boom, the Concord, the Concord ruled that, that the prisoners must have three meals per day Yo. and it must be a nutritious meal. Mm. You know, if it's it's lunch, it must have steak or meat and vegetables, things that people who are not criminals are not entitled to. But it is enshrined in the Bill of Rights mm. of our Constitution. And that's what President Zuma is doing. He is using his constitutional right to can fight his uh, labor matters. Let's not labor, court matters. Court matters, yes. Let's go to the IEC, the IEC election plan and date frame. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, this past week, I think Monday or Tuesday, yeah. the IEC went out and, and announced the time frame of the elections. Uh, we all know that uh, uh, from the 18th of May uh, 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 next year, the, the current administration will come to an end. Mm. Uh, in other ways, parliament and, and the cabinet and uh, provinces, they will have to be, to be dissolved. But and the IEC must have must held election or hold elections within 90 days from mm. the 18th of May. So then the 90 days runs up to August. So somewhere between May and August, oh, we'll have national and provincial elections. So the IEC is just awaiting President Ramaphosa to can pronounce on the date. That's one. Mm -hmm. Number two, they they announced that the list is going to be very interesting, as we have discussed before. Uh, independent candidates and, and more than 56 political parties. Some are still registering today. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. So the president will have to pronounce. But one other thing from the education side that mm. people do not know, the, the Constitution of South Africa and the Electoral uh, Act does not force the national and the provincial elections to be held on the same time. Okay. It's not supposed to be like that. It's just a preference of the IEC. But if they want them to be separated, they can do that. Mm. The Electoral Act makes that provision. Mm. But uh, historically, for the last 30 years, they've been held at the same time. So again, they've announced that they prefer to hold them at the same time, but it is up to the head of state to, to pronounce on that. So yeah, let us look forward. Is the election period has been opened. Uh, we now know that we are less than 12 months to 12, 11 months, less than 11 months to elections. I just hope it doesn't happen in winter. The youth will not go and vote. People will be Baba Lazmi. <laughs> let, let them announce it early. Let's do it in May, my birthday month. You know, it's an important mm. month. But yeah, that's where we are as a nation. Let's go to Australia. There was a referendum in Australia. What are they referenduming about? Well, uh, historically, we should be knowing that countries like Australia, who are white countries and former colonies of the British Empire, Mm. They had natives living there, the same as us in the southern part of the yeah, continent. Yeah, they, they discovered nothing. There were people living there already. Yeah, there were people living there. They're so-called Aborigines, the native mm. Australians. So what happened years back, the, the native Australians, in inverted commas, the, the so-called Aborigines, mm. they were given a right to be recognized as residents and citizens of that country. Okay. So they could participate in elections, they could vote. But now the current prime minister, which was a very serious backlog on him, mm. he has been the champion of the rights of the native Australians. Mm. So they went on a national referendum to now regard the natives, uh, uh, the aborigines, the native, as the rightful and historical owners of the land. They don't want to do that. Well, they did not. Mm. Over 90% yeah. of Australians voted and said, no, we, are, we have recognized mm. these people. For many years, we didn't see them as human beings. And as citizens, mm. we have given them that. That's it. That's all they are getting. To say they are natives and they are original owners of this land, they deny them that right, Fresh. Over 90% overwhelming. And this is one of the countries that is said in the United Nations to be championing human rights, to like peace and so forth. Mm. You know, but, but, but let me take it back home. We went through the same. Or we are doing the same in South Africa, in Botswana, in Namibia. Mm. Let me talk about our countries that I love. You know, I always tell people I'm a citizen in Botswana and South Africa. Yeah. And Lesotho, but Namibia as well. The same people are the natives of these three countries. Yeah. But we are not, you know, allocating to them and recognizing them 
as the indigenous native owners of this land that we are occupying. Actually, white people for their racist and colonial mentality uh, 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 term, it's them who are pushing that thing to say, Bantus, this is not your country. Stop saying this is your land. We are Africans. But, but we are not giving them the same thing. The United States of America, the so-called superpower and champions of democracy in the world, is doing the same with Native Americans. Mm -hmm. the, the, the people that people regard and call them uh, the Red Indians. Those are Native Americans. Mm -hmm. Those are the real owners of land in the United States of America. They're, they're discriminated. They're put in reservations, they build you a casino, you are left there, uh, uh, many uh, become alcoholics because, exactly. the, the, you know, your existence is next to none. Brazil, yeah. when you look at Brazil, the same, the native, yeah. uh, remember in Brazil, the whites and our brothers, our afro brothers, the blacks, mm -hmm. they're all foreigners there. Whites came from Europe, mm -hmm. colonialism, the Portuguese, then the slaves, Africans went there as slaves. Who were the people living there? It was the native Brazilians yeah. from the Amazon and over. They are now being separated. Their rights have been trampled upon. They are not being recognized as the natives. And this is the problem with the world and these countries that are said to be democratic. Brazil is democratic. America mm -hmm. is said to be democratic. We are said to be democratic. Australia, Botswana, and Namibia, and all these countries I've mentioned are refusing to recognize the natives and the real owners of those kinds and that land. Why did we go to an extent of even having in South Africa, what do you call it, a, a, a sign language as recent as the last few months as our 12th official language? Mm -hmm. And we don't have any of the sign languages as an official language. And it's one of those signs. We are not mm -hmm. recognizing it. They're still camping at the Union Building for the last three years, by the way. Are they, are they still there? They're still there. They've oh, got wow. tents and they're still there. It's been through us. The media has forgotten about mm. them. Those people who during lockdown marched to the union building, demanded to see President Ramaphosa and erected tents at the gardens of the union building. I passed there two days ago. Mm. They are still sitting there. Wow. And and those are the challenges that we are sitting with. We we look at face value things. We lie to the world. We claim to be democratic. We claim to be a, a non-racial society in a broad church where we recognize everybody. We do not recognize the natives and the true owners of this land. Then I refuse people to call them the Koi. We don't, it's an insult, by the way. South Africans don't know calling people mm -hmm. the Koi Koi or the Koi Sen. Mm -hmm. That was invented by the Dutch settlers because mm. of the language and the trick. Uh, yes. The Koi 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 language and the Dutch because they, they are like, ah, these are Koi Koi's. Mm. But Koi is an insult actually mm. to the Sen and the native Africans that were found by the colonial settlers at this part of the continent, the same way as the Aborigines in Australia. But, but I think we should stand up as a nation and start talking for our brothers, Barwa. You know, that's one thing that people do not know. Yes. When, when Batwana refers to the same people as Barwa, mm. it means the people of the South, but it can mm. also mean Barwa, which means our brothers. Our brothers, yes. yes that's yes, why yes. they, they, Kastwana, mm. the same people are called Barwa, the people of the South. Mm. And when we address them, we say Barwa in Setswana, which means our brothers or sons of our fathers. So those are some of the things that the nation has neglected. Mm. And, and I hope we don't end up like the embarrassing Australians to deny people a simple right, just a recognition. <laughs> it's embarrassing. And I'm mm. glad they are not in the Rugby World Cup for their conduct and behavior of denying people their human, natural, God-given right to land ownership. But also, why are you having a referendum about an injustice? Because, because they, they had the referendum was going to push the lawmakers, the parliamentarians, to amend the constitution to ah, recognize them. Okay, yes. The constitution in Australia mm. does not recognize them that way. But before, they didn't even recognize them as human beings. Then it changed in the 60s mm. to recognize them as human beings, mm. but not as citizens. Then it changed in the 80s or 70s to recognize them as citizens. Wasn't that fake news, though, that Aboriginal people were not... Uh, they were classed under fauna and flora. Under, yeah, uh, no, no, under, no, no, no. Under plants and animals. It, it, during, it's, it's the not, it's, during the colonial years, uh, okay. when, when colonial white settlers came from Europe yeah. to Africa as well as to that part, to Australasia, 
when they saw them, they didn't see them as as human beings. Mm. You know, they 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 didn't say they, with their hair. That's very beautiful. Yeah. Our women are wearing that hair now. They are buying it. Very beautiful hair. They look at they see that they, they look at it as if it's planned. It's not fake news. Mm. It happened historically that the the British settlers in arriving mm. in that part of 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 the world and they saw this black you know. Uh, uh, people who look like sumo wrestlers or like the 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 team we are playing uh, this this evening, mm. uh, the well like built the, like Aborigines, the, like Maoris, like Maoris, yes. and they didn't see them initially as human beings because they also didn't understand the language the same way as when the British arrived and the Dutch mm. and the southern chief of Africa, yes, they didn't sir. realize, they didn't recognize the same people as human beings. They mm. they looked at them as animals, mm. but that shows how the mind of the Caucasians is narrow because anything that they haven't met. Mm. Uh, 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 savage. Yes, let, let me tell you what happened, you know, quickly. Mm. In, in 1996, 97, when I was 17 in Germany, I took a trip to, to Finland. Mm. There's a time of the year in Finland where the sun doesn't set. Sure. Like the sun, it's 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 a day the whole day. Yeah, it's a it's a tundra region. Yes, so. yes. Or, or or sometimes it gets dark for over almost twenty hours. Mm. And I went there to experience that, you know. Mm. And and some guy told me that a years, few years before that, parents from somewhere in another country in Europe took their kids to there, mm. and their kids, it was for the first time they saw a black person. Oh yes. And and the kids were busy instead of experiencing this sun and what the smooth night sun. Yeah, they, they were busy asking their parents, are those human beings? Why do they look like that? Oh, you know, wow. it's mm. it's it shows the narrow mind of people who are not exposed. But these days, I don't think we'll have that problem because of the internet, social media, and television. Yes. Uh, uh, the same as the American diplomat who once came to South Africa and was shocked when he arrived at the then Johannesburg International Airport. Now, there's a true story that I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. The, the American diplomat doing some dirty job came here, and, and when they arrived, it joins back international airport, so you can hear that it was after 1994. Mm. And when they arrived, they said, sir, you can bound and leave. He thought he is leaving the plane to connect, to go to South Africa. Mm. And they were like, no, no, you are in South Africa, and he looked around the airport, it's like, are you sure I'm in South Africa? This can't be. Because that person expected to land somewhere in the jungle. Oh, yes, yes, yes. He yes. expected to land somewhere in the Kruger Park. On a smaller plane. On a smaller plane mm. where, and he, he never imagined that a jumbo jet or a Boeing mm. could move from Washington via whatever into mm. Johannesburg International Airport and he sees glitz and glamour and cinemas and McDonald's in there because McDonald's was already existing in South mm. Africa. Mm. So, so, decolonizing the mind it was not only decolonizing the mind of the African people. Mm. We must also try and decolonize the mind of the Europeans. We all have work to do. We have we work have, to we do. We have a lot to unlearn and we have a lot to learn. Uh, uh, absolutely. And we also have a lot of introspection to, 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 to make because without that introspection, we're not going to change anything. We're, we're not going to be, we're not going to realize that, listen, I need to be a part of moving things in a certain direction. Absolutely. And I can't do that without admitting that I'm part of the problem. Yes. So yes. hopefully that introspection will happen and hopefully we'll unlearn a lot of uh, what we've seen happen and we've seen being allowed to happen over the last couple of 100 years. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Uh, Butsang, I think we, we're done. Oh, thanks, Rush. Thank you very much. I think this has been an interesting week. Very Nobody interesting week. Locally for yes, us. Sir. But thank you very much, and, where, where, and, and thanks to your followers. Where do we find your social media? Uh, Butsangm at gmail.com, and you can WhatsApp me on 082-485-9100. That's not the social line. That's the business line. You it's know, all about for, the book. For, 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 if you want to order my biography and the book, and for booking to, for booking to be speakers at events. Ah, yes. you know, and quickly on that one, thanks to Wow What A Week, I was doing exams this week, mm -hmm. and then I was a participant in the Tabon Bakey School uh, event that happened this week. And as I was there, I stood up to make a comment about the politics. And one of the professors, I don't want to say for me, he said, are you the guy from Wow What A Week? And said, yes, I am. He's like, no, 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 give me your numbers. I want you to come and talk to my student at my university, all costs covered. Oh, wow. Ah, so, so I was very impressed that a university so, professor... So, so you're going to charge an appearance fee also, right? In the, oh, by the way, the lady who was sitting next to me as an administrator said to this professor, this one will come and be on television and in front of your students for free. You will book him via me, 
and then you pay everything to me, I will pay him because he may end up doing it for free. But no, I'm on a serious note. I'm taking these calls very seriously now. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm, I'm very often on the BBC, on mm. RT, Russia television, mm. and many other international. And, and seriously now, I do a lot of work and research, mm. and I command a price, a very serious price that is having... A, a, a foreign currency tech. Rent is very weak. I'm charging in in euros and, and, and bitcoins. Yeah, uh, charging bitcoins, euro, dollar, or pula, and you'll make your money. Well, pula, I don't know. Botswana don't like politics. They've never invited me to go and be a talk on Botswana television. I'll arrange but, it for you. Uh, please, my brother. Done deal. Thank we, you, Fresh. We, we are done with Wow What a Week, hashtag politrix. Thanks, as always, for interacting with us. Please go to the like button. Please go and subscribe. Tell your mother, tell your father, tell your grandparents, tell everybody that Butsang has been on your screen and your podcast. Coming to you from Amp Studios, we're part of the Africa Podcast Network. Shout out to our cinematographers, Pezulu Works, uh, Trevor and his team. All of our imaging by Otis The Floor Frazier, our guest, Botsang Muilwa, creative producer, Kuvesh Mohan, and show producer, Kileso Modisa King. Email us at waw at africapodcastnetwork.com. Till next week. Have a great week in spite of yourselves.